I use the GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP, quite a bit. It's actually one of the few pieces of free software that I use on a daily basis that normal people have actually heard of. But unfortunately, the way that a lot of people, specifically Windows users, are learning about GIMP is in one of the worst ways possible, by paying for it from the Microsoft Store. Look at the mask of my boy. Now, some of you will probably say, but Kenny, you can just go onto the internet, you can navigate to GIMP's website, you can go click on this little download link here, and then, oh, look at that, there is a binary that's available for Microsoft Windows. You can download a nice EXE that lets you install GIMP on Windows through a graphical interface, so easy anybody can do it. Yes, you are correct. Anybody, even Windows users, can download GIMP for free from their website. But you're forgetting something. So many of the people that are using Windows are morons. So many people, mostly Zoomers, are so used to just using their phones and installing programs from an app store that they don't even know how to find apps on the internet anymore because they lack the essential skills like which of these links is going to download the real program and which one is going to install some sketchy Ukrainian antivirus that actually turns your computer into a command and control center for the next ransomware group. Downloading programs from the internet is a dying art in current year, like driving a stick shift or basic agriculture skills. These big tech companies, they've really changed the way that people interface with their computers. It's gotten so bad that a lot of Gen Z kids apparently don't even know what folders are and some seem to not understand what a computer actually is either. Hey, hey, what you doing on your computer? What's a computer? By the way, Apple, this is not the tomboy that I ordered. I specifically requested the powerlifting GF9000 with fruit crushing thigh action, not the one that looks like she created a ska song for the Starbucks menu to help her memorize it. Now at this point you might be wondering, how can Microsoft get away with this? How can they take free software like GIMP and then sell it on their own platform as GIMP Pro or GIMP 2.1 Pro if you want. I honestly don't know what the difference between either of these applications are. This one is slightly more expensive. Both of them are on sale with only four days left to the sale. But here's the thing. There's actually nothing in the GPL license that prevents you from doing this. That's the whole reason why people will refer to free software as Libre software, because in the English language, it's a bit more difficult to differentiate between something that is free as in price and free as in having the liberty and you know being free, being able to do whatever you want, which is really what free means in this case. If you have access to the source code, then you can add to it, you can remove from it, you can modify things as you wish, assuming that you know how to code. If not, then maybe somebody else will create a modified version that meets your needs, and free software needs to allow for that person to be able to distribute the modified copies of the code that they made, and maybe they'll charge you some money for it. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to say definitively whether or not this piece of software or this piece of software or this one or this one are violating the GPL or whatever software licensing laws, but it does appear to me that they are mostly complying with it as little as they possibly can. For one, there's the name of these applications, the GIMP Image Editor Pro and GIMP 2.1 Pro. So the name of this application makes it sound like there is some kind of different software, different code in this application than just vanilla GIMP. It makes it sound like it is an improved professional version, if you will. But if we go down and look at the source code that's linked here, uh, oh, actually I passed it. That's right, because it's actually not even hyperlinked. Here we go. So we'll go to the source code. And sure enough, it is just vanilla GIMP. It takes us to, I think this is the GNOME's GitLab that is hosting a copy of the vanilla GIMP code. So one of two things 
must be true about this application. Either this software is in violation of the GPL because things were added to make it a actually different piece of code uh, and then it wasn't published, or this is literally just GIMP with a different logo. And not even that different because they literally just took the same GIMP dog or whatever animal this is supposed to be and then they made it orange. And like I said, the way that the source code is linked is also done in a pretty crappy way. I mean, it's literally at the bottom of the description and this is what you see when you first click on the page. So obviously most people are not reading past these four paragraphs or four sentences and it's not even hyperlinked. So it's really, really easy to miss that. And the cherry on top with this particular piece of software is that the so-called publisher info, the GIMP Image Editor Pro's website, doesn't even actually take you to the GIMP website. It takes you to Title Media Incorporated, which to a consumer implies that this is somehow the person who made your program, even though Tidal Media Inc. didn't change a single line of code in GIMP. Like I said, if they did that, then they would be in violation of the GPL because they are not publishing any of the source code that they modified. But things get even spookier. Let's take a look at Tidal Media's privacy policy. Also, I don't know why they're called Yellow Elephant Productions up here, I guess, Maybe that used to be their name and they just haven't changed that since obviously this hasn't been updated since April of 2018, but whatever. So personal data that we collect, let's see what they collect. Name and contact data, okay, that's pretty much universal. Everyone who collects data seems to do that. But credentials? We collect passwords, password hints, and similar security information used for authentication and account access? Why? Why are you collecting passwords, password hints? Why do you need to do that? I don't even see a place where I can sign in on this website. So what account data are you collecting from me? I really hope that whatever data or password data you're trying to collect, that you're at least hashing it. Because if you're trying to collect and store plain text passwords, that is pants on head retarded. And I can't be sure that these guys are not that stupid because if we take a look at their website up here, oh no, look at that, the connection is not secure. They didn't even implement SSL properly into their website. The next thing they're gonna tell me is that the back end of this website is some Microsoft Server 2003 machine that's running in the back of a pizza shop somewhere. I'm also noticing some of the other software that I guess they've created that's linked up here. We've got WinRAR Pro and we've got VPN Client Pro. You know, I'm starting to notice a pattern here. It seems like this company likes to take free software, add the word pro to the end of it, maybe make the logo a different color, and then sell it as if it's their own. And GIMP isn't even the only piece of software on the Microsoft Store that is doing this. We've also got FreeCAD, which doesn't seem to mention the software license at all. It's not in the description. I don't see it anywhere on here. Now, granted, FreeCAD is under the LGPL license. So maybe doing that is allowed, but then again, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, we also have the free cab for Windows privacy policy, which I think this one is pretty hilarious too. It's literally just a Google Doc. <laughs> like, what is this? They're not even putting a lot of effort into ripping off other people's code. Like, at least when Trump was doing his truth social thing and he was ripping off, uh, what was it, Mastodon's code, at least it looked kind of professional. I mean, granted, he would, or not him specifically, but whoever was in charge of the project uh, was making some pretty bad security errors because their test server was public facing and people were able to create accounts before it was done. But this is just laziness that's going on here. And then there's also LibreOffice, which honestly, I don't think this one is quite as bad because they say that it's LibreOffice vanilla. They don't try to trick you into thinking that they made some kind of modification for it. They are still charging money for it, which is you know a little bit questionable. 
Um, and then if we go down here, like everything is linking back to LibreOffice. So what's new in this version? Boom, right here. Uh, copyright, that links back to LibreOffice. And then publisher info actually takes you to the LibreOffice website. Uh, so again, they're collecting money off of it. I don't know, maybe this is just like a laziness tax. Like you're just collecting money from people that are too lazy to look for software beyond the Microsoft store. Um, I guess if you're going to do that, maybe this is the most ethical way to do it. But the whole point of this, the point of this video is that free software is almost always free as in beer. You don't have to pay for it. But if you really do want to pay for the software, just donate to the, to the developers. That way, the money that you're spending actually goes back into the application. It'll potentially make the application better, and it supports the people who are actually making this application, who are actually taking the time to code, instead of just giving money to a third party that's just lazily downloading a binary, I guess putting it onto the Microsoft Store, paying like 20 bucks to sign up for the Microsoft Store, and then selling you something that you can download for free to people that don't know any better. But that's it for this video, guys. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Don't ever donate money or, or pay for software through the Microsoft Store, especially if it's free software. Donate to the devs instead, and have a great rest of your day.